Hi, and welcome to Studio Time with Zach. My name is Zachary Rudder. I'm an artist based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And this week's episode of Studio Time, we've got a very special commission for a friend whose grandmother recently passed away. We've got a lot of work to do and no time to waste, so let's get started. I'm sure you've figured it out by now, but this week's episode features power tools, so let's get cutting. Now to ensure straight cuts, you always want to use a speed square, and we want to get a perfect 45 with our miter saw so these line up. We've got all of our wood cut out, we've got some perfect 45 degree miter cuts, and you guys may be asking yourself, what the heck is this guy building today? Well, I'm going to tell you, we are constructing our own canvas using plywood and some 1x3s. Let me show you guys the tools we'll need. Obviously a miter saw. If you guys don't have access to a miter saw, there's always the good old fashioned way. And once we have our wood cut out, what you're going to need next is a drill, some wood glue, some screws, and a pocket hole jig. If you go ahead and look closely at each corner, you can see I went ahead and drilled two pocket holes into each corner of the frame. This is where the wood will connect, and we're gonna wood glue the seam here. And that's gonna leave us with a nice, sturdy, strong frame for our canvas. So let's get this put together. Now, as you can see, we've got our board ready. So I'm gonna sand this, prime it, and get it ready for some comics, which I've got a special little surprise for the comics. You'll see. All right, check out this big, beautiful canvas. We've got the sides painted. We've got the surface sanded. Now it's time to prime. Got the surface sanded, primed, and ready to go. Up next, you know I always put comic books on the background, but this time we've got something fun in mind. So let me tell you guys about this painting. This piece was commissioned by my friend Bill in memory of his grandmother, Alice. Bill and Alice have been huge fans of Studio Time with Zach since I started early last year. I was lucky enough to meet Bill while working on a mural at the Rankin Christian Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Word got around the office that there was an artist in the building painting, and he came down to check out what I was doing. Immediately we hit it off, and we've been good friends ever since. Sadly, his grandmother Alice passed away towards the end of 2020 and he thought what better way to cherish her memory than by commissioning a painting so I thought why not do you one better Bill let's film an episode of studio time just for Alice and let's make it something special so what we're gonna do to make this piece even more special is print out photos of Alice from her childhood on up to adulthood and, com and collage them on the background instead of the comic books so it's just another way to cherish her memory let's get these photos printed up so we can start gluing Photos have arrived. I am so excited. Look at how amazing Alice looks. She's going to be a perfect backdrop for this painting. And I think I'll let you guys even see now. Another element of it is going to be a magnolia tree that she could see from the front of her house. So I thought, why not print that up and put it in the background as well? So, I know I've explained this in a million different episodes, but what you'll need is some Mod Podge, a nice little cup and a brush to rub it on with, and your images. I haven't used photographs before, so I wasn't quite sure how to measure it out. I hope I have enough and I don't have to order more, but hey, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Would you look how close I was with the order I put in? This is 40 different images. And yes, they do repeat, but when, one thing that I notice across the board whenever I paint is that you never really know what's gonna be the background at the end of the painting. So I thought, let's replicate all the photos that Bill sent me and give us an opportunity to see a little bit of it all. I obviously didn't order enough photos. We probably have another 20 photos to go to fill it in. So one more order, let's get it placed in so we can get this background finished and get started on this beautiful portrait. <sighs> Back to Walgreens. 
Let's get it done. Find the smiles inside. Why don't we go ahead and let this beauty dry? As I mentioned, I got a lot of work coming into 2021 and uh, no time to waste, even though this is the place to waste time. As you can see, I got some beautiful cats that need some love and some black outlining. So let's get to work. Check these little cuties out. So these little guys are Ryu and Kenny. They were commissioned by my friend Jess, who I used to work with when I used to wait tables at Rock Bottom. And I'm so happy we could finally get this painting of her two kitties done. Let's let that dry. We'll clear coat it and send it off to its new home. But now back to the painting at hand. So let the games begin. Now, I wanted to get all that sky and grass finished before I started working on the skeleton outline. I know that the tree details are gonna be crazy. Last time I painted the tree, it was actually for Josie's nursery. And I remember being so frustrated. I wanted to approach this one a little bit differently. Now, onto the skeleton outline. So for those of you guys that don't know, the skeleton outline is the secret sauce of the comic grid system because it takes away our need to measure out a traditional grid, which as a lot of you artists may already know, takes a lot of time, a lot of measuring and a lot of math. And uh, I've said it before, but I know most artists don't enjoy math unless it's money in their pocket. The skeleton outline is complete. You can see this corner up here is missing that one very important thing every Zack Ryder painting needs, a sun heart. Then we're gonna start coloring in the tree. Let's get to work. All right, time to clean some brushes. Before we clean these brushes, I wanna remind you guys that we just unveiled a brand new all over Sun Heart collection to ZacharyRoderArt.com. We've got shirts, fanny packs, backpacks, crop tops. Stop on over to the website, check them out. Your support means the world and it's what keeps us going at studio time. So let's clean some brushes. Never forget, a clean brush is a happy brush and the better you treat your brushes, the longer they'll work for you. We still have a long way to go on this piece. Let's get back to work on the background. So if you guys look closely, I'm adding Alice's home to the background. Uh, I should have probably done this before I added the tree, but that's okay. After having a nice conversation with him about the progress of the painting, we agreed that this home is where she made her memories and this painting is a memory of her. So it's only right that these two things meet. This thing's looking killer. The hair's on point, the background's on point. The tree is more beautiful than I could ever have imagined. Now it's on to the skin tones and I don't typically go in on skin, uh, but this time around I want to actually give this a little extra flair. I am going to be mixing some skin tones, I'm going to try and blend and match their skin tones as much as I can, but I thought I'd go over the colors that I tend to use whenever I mix skin tones. I always start with an unbleached titanium base, this is Utrecht brand, then quinacridone magenta and alizarin crimson, so I'll, I'll try and blend those two colors together, and I'm using Primarily liquid text paints to do so. I feel like Bob Ross right now. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. I absolutely love painting figures. So when I'm blending skin, I typically try to leave it as solid as possible, very limited shading. I want these pieces to resemble comic books because after all, that is what inspired me to get into art in the first place. So I, I, I'd like the skin to remain solid, but on the warmer side. So the quinacridone magenta and the alizarin crimson really bring the warmth of the skin tone out. And uh, I think with the black outlining, these two things complement each other beautifully. We've got everything colored in to a point where it's time to just dive on in. Now it's time to start outlining and get into the details. Never underestimate the power of a black outline. The moment you start putting in that detail and bringing this entire image together is like my favorite feeling in the world. Every time I look at a piece at the beginning, in the middle, I'm always like, okay, we've got a long road ahead of us, but it's this point here where I'm driving down the road and I could see my destination out the window. Now, before we move on any further, I have to let you guys know, I feel so much like Bob Ross right now, painting this happy little tree. And speaking of happy little trees, if you guys look closely, you'll see I actually went ahead and hid eight different words that make me feel happy. So, Bill, I hope you have fun searching through. Just a little extra piece 
to keep you interested in looking at it. This painting has been one heck of a ride. From start to finish, I think it's been smooth sailing and I am so pleased with how it's winding down. I typically have a hard time painting likenesses and it is something that I know most artists struggle with. It's a very difficult thing to replicate someone's smile and someone's beauty and someone's eyes. But I think on this painting we did what felt like the impossible and we made a perfect portrait of Bill and Alice and I know he is going to cherish it and love it when he sees it for the first time. I am so happy. All this painting needs now is that one special thing every Zack Rutter painting has, the signature. I cannot believe it's finished. I am so happy with how it turned out. There's a lot of love that went into this. There's a lot of love that Alice brought into this world. Uh, comment below if you guys can find any of the eight words hidden in the trees. And please, by all means, let me know how you think I did painting Bill and Alice's likeness. As always, if you had fun, if you enjoyed yourself, and if you think you learned a thing or two, please, 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 like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun happening at Studio Time. And until next time, keep creating art. Bye, guys. It's that special time again. It's time to take a look at all the hard work paying off in the close-ups. The details on this are impeccable. The photos underneath are outstanding. They peek out at just the right moments. They collaborate with each other perfectly, just as Bill and I did to commemorate Alice's memory. So if you guys made it this far, thanks for watching, guys.